welcome to Gem Power. This is the section where we bring you inspiring, motivating, and empowering content to take your life from here to here. Believe me, we're about to do that today with my good friend, Earl Lynch from the Kairos Experience. Now, I gotta say this, if you haven't watched the last series, which was about the seven habits of highly successful people, do not watch this. Get and watch that video series first, because that will change your life, my friends. But what we are going to talk about today is something that is dear to my heart, okay, and that's selling. Now, before you look to switch off, you think, oh, that's not a video for me. I'm going to say this. If you're a guy and you're trying to meet a girl, you're selling. There you go. If you're a couple and you're sitting in front of your mortgage broker or you're sitting in front of your bank, you're selling. The guy sitting at an interview, you're selling. You are selling every single day. And the reason a lot of you are not achieving is because you do not know how to sell. Now, this guy is coming to two of my businesses, okay? Just checking, touring, and helped us turn around the sales. Every year, we've done more and more sales. Is it a coincidence that I bring this guy into the business? I think not. So I'm gonna ask him to break down, just in half an hour, some of the key points of what it takes to be a good salesman. And I think what we might have to do is expand that, break it down into real deep little sessions, okay. uh, and maybe do a workshop again. So there's some good <laughs> stuff coming. So Earl, this is over to okay. you. I'm excited to even refresh my own mind okay. and this become a better salesman because I thought I was good, but I know I can get better. There you go. Well, thank you, Denzel. You're okay. always a Come pleasure on, to work with my brother. Awesome. All right. So let me start by saying, how do people typically sell? What is not great to do as a salesperson? Okay, I'm interested. So first of all, you might recognize this. This is a penny farthing. Yeah. I keep it as a constant reminder in my office. This is my clock and it's the shape of a penny farthing. But today we're gonna to use a penny farthing as an example of how not to do business. Right. The big wheel yeah. represents everything you know about your business, your product, your services. The little wheel therefore represents, and Denzel, then the other person. That's right, everything right. you know about your customer. customer. Everything you know oh. about who you're gonna sell to, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So typically what people do is they ride into the business front wheel first. So what that means is they're gonna ride in selling every product, telling you about Man. everything they do, every yeah. service they provide, and we call it spray and, and pray. pray. Spray and pray. You literally spray the customer with as many things that you have Features, in your portfolio. Benefits. There you go. Yeah, yeah. And pray that they pick something up. Yeah. Well, let me tell you, that's not effective. It doesn't work. I've it's seen it not time effective. and time again. As a salesperson, 15 years. There you go. Plus now, I see so many salespeople going in like that, never asking nothing. That's right. So how and do we build that? Yeah, well, the, the, here's the thing though. Yeah. If you continue with spray and pray, how does it make your customer feel? Well, they're not really involved in the sales process and yeah. they feel like they're being sold to. to. And people hate that. That's the one that, thing I the, heard the, clients go. say. They hate even being sold, sold to. to. They want to be involved in the process. Yeah. And they've got a, a real good understanding of what's out there now, particularly with the internet. So this is one of the first things that a good salesperson would do yeah. is ask good questions, questions. Right? right so what might be some of the typical questions you might ask you know well tell me about your business where are you going over the next three years yeah. and when they give you that information it grows the back wheel a little bit you I get like a little it. bit more insight yeah so what might be another series of questions you might ask you might ask well what's your organization structure look like you know who are your main competitors you know, how do you unlock funds? What are the big things that you've done recently? And you gather information, you gather yeah. information, you gather information till you get to the point where you've got a lot of information yeah. and there comes an intersection, this intersection here, where there's a lot that you know about your business, but there's also a lot that you know about your customer's, customer's business, business as well. Right. And what lies in the intersection in between the two is the solution. Right, so this is this bit here. This is where the solution is going to come so from. So this is what your knowledge. Yep. Okay, and do you know, can I just say something? Yes, sure. I find sometimes salespeople, yep. okay, and I've had in our organization, don't even know their own business, uh, right? right. I, I don't know if he was going to mention that, but they struggle with that, yep. and they struggle with that, yep. and then they're not able to offer to this. position a solution. Love so that. you have just mentioned something which I think I will go to before yep. I go into deeper. Um, you need to be able to find the solution and to be honest, this is what we call solution selling. You can look at the book written by Mike Bosworth. Great book, gives some real good insight into what, it, or what all of this is about. Awesome. But just to mention the point that Denzel raised just there, 
the back wheel is everything about the company's situation. So you need to grow what we call your situational knowledge. A good salesperson yeah. will do that. Everything they need to know about that company, they'll try and glean it either from the internet, either from uh, a company accounts, yeah. any public records, anything that gets you information about who it is you're eventually wanting to sell to, it's called situational knowledge. Can I just share something on that very brief? I was in a meeting the other day um, with a director. Uh, or commissioner. So this guy's meant to know everything about the money. Right. I walked in, I knew more about the finance of that company there you go. than he did. So he stood there in awe. Uh -huh. So because I had him in awe in the first five minutes, yes. he then had to give me the respect and talk. What you've done there is you've yeah. automatically showed that you've got credibility. Yeah. You've shown that you've got the confidence to be able to talk about his business. Yeah. You, you've, you've also got some chemistry already with him because he's now liking the fact that you've done your homework. Or as you say, rapport, rapport. Rapport, rapport, rapport. rapport, rapport. <laughs> I'm coming to that, right? That, so yeah. all of these things, they build trust and it enables him to come from behind his wall of self-preservation. Yeah and to come into a relationship with you. So this is really important. If you don't come into a relationship, there is no yeah, sale, right? So you need to know situation. Now, yeah. here's the other thing. Key, capability knowledge. Okay, capability knowledge. Everything you need to know about your product, your yeah. services. So if you don't know what you sell, how it works, if you don't understand what it is that makes your company unique and special in what it provides yeah. to the customers, then you're in a weak position. Oh, so okay. when you have a combination of these two things, yeah. That's what gives you the opportunity to position a solution. Right, okay. And that's, that goes back to the penny farthing. Absolutely, Boom, absolutely. Got it. Got it. So got now it. you can see with the penny farthing, there's my capability knowledge, yeah. but there's my situational knowledge, which has grown out of asking Good. great questions. Awesome. However, it doesn't stop there. There's, there's more. You there's gotta, more. There's more. Okay. You, you got to possess some really good people skills. Boom. And this is where the rapport comes yeah. in. The ability to strike rapport, the ability to have a conversation that when you ask a question, yeah. they want to answer. Yeah. And when you are asked a question, um, the, y you will give lots of information. Awesome. And this information exchange yeah. shows that you're in rapport. I'd say, just to give you another insight on that, yeah. um, I was at a meeting and actually one of the girls who works for me, yeah. was there and she was on her laptop. Yes. And I don't agree with it. And the reason I say it is because it didn't look like she was paying no. attention. That's right. So she's more interested in taking down notes. One of the things I learned from a book was the best lawyer in the world never took notes. There you go. So what he did, he listened. And if you listen, you're able to regurgitate and that shows someone actually you're really paying attention. There you go. And that helps me pe uh, build people skills. I love where you've gone there. Yeah. Listening is a people skill. Yeah. I value listening more than I value speaking actually. Wow. Okay. Right? It's huge. It's very yeah. powerful. Susan Scott, the author of the book, Fierce Conversations and How to Have Them. One fierce of, Conversations. Fi yeah. I these are that. tough conversations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of her rules is if the relationship is important to you, yeah. and clearly if we're in sales or if we're trying to convince someone, the relationship's important to us. Yeah. She says, be here and be prepared to be nowhere else. Yeah. Not on your phone, not texting, not on your computer, not making notes necessarily, yeah. but with this one individual and having rapport. Come on. That's what makes the breakthrough on people's people skills. I think, you know what? I already know, like, we're, we're not gonna have enough time to go through this. <laughs> yeah, in you can see. So I know we're gonna have to, we're gonna, we're gonna bring you a full <laughs> catalog of stuff yeah. to help break this down. So we've got okay. people skills. Yep. And then clearly, the most business critical one is you need some sales, some sales skills awesome. as well. Yeah. And typically what's in there is your ability to negotiate, okay. your ab ability to present, yeah. but more than anything, your close. ability to close. Close the deal. You should always be considering yeah. how is it I'm going to close? How do you yeah. say, are we in for a deal? There you've got to be able to close You told me deal. something, uh, obviously, you know, we've had you in our business a, yeah. a fair few times now. And the one thing that you said, and I think is key, I know we're not going to go into incredible detail with the time that we've got, is you're always closing. Yes. And so the one thing I do from the very first meeting, well, actually, I'm closing from the first email. <laughs> you taught me that. Right. Okay, so I close from the first email right. when we're going to meet. Yes. What's the next meeting? Yes. Who do I need to talk to yes. next? What's the next action? Yes. Okay, what's it? So you had me doing that. There That's a go. sales skill. Most people don't close, so yeah. don't ask the next thing that needs to happen. Well, let's be honest. Most people, particularly people who are P 
people people yeah emotional people yeah they like to talk about the business talk around the product fluffy stuff yeah, yeah. and and you've got to get used to the fact that you've got to ask for the deal at the end of the conversation that's not money so so it's great to have all of these other things but yeah. you've got to be able to close the deal as well love that all right We're definitely have to now there something. is more detail clearly behind all of these yeah. for instance of capability knowledge you need to know your features your advantages and your benefits yeah. where is the value of what you're selling yeah. how does it enable that company to make money save money, money look good and feel good yeah. you've got to be able to tie that argument in as, oh, okay. as well so there's a lot more that goes behind each of these but you've got that overall helicopter yeah. view we've got that now where I'm gonna to go to next is once you understand the fundamentals we've now got to build a process whereby if we follow this process we're kind of guaranteeing some consistency and approach yeah. uh, that, that we're going to follow um, which is successful for us so it starts with leads you first of all need to have some leads yeah so we're going to talk about lead generation then we're going to talk about opportunities before putting some agreements together oh, okay so leads there's three key things when we're doing lead generation yeah. one we've got to create some leads we've got to generate some leads some interest yeah. I'll create some interest in you cannot sell unless people know you're out there yeah it's not who you know yeah it it's knows who you. knows you. I like right? that. So who it's, you know who yeah. knows you. Who, so how yeah. are they going to know you? Yeah, they're yeah. going to know you either through a website, either they're going to know you because you've got personal connections, yeah, you've got media. a relationship, social media, yeah. even down to some offline methods. For yeah. instance, there's a pub across the road that they have some beer coasters. Yeah. And on the beer coasters, businesses sometimes advertise on those coasters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it means that when the person picks up a pint or a drink, they look on the coaster and they can see the name of that company. Awesome. But what's the purpose behind that? Create, Create leads. leads. Yeah. If it's on Facebook, if it's on social media, if it's on LinkedIn, doesn't matter. Create leads. Find out where your market is that you want to sell yeah. to. Create and, the leads. And, and the one thing I'd say as well, and I'm sorry to interject. Not you know, at all. We're trying to do this in half an hour. And I think we're going to run out of time. But hey, <laughs> um, is understand you don't have to have the whole world. Yes. Find out who's your tribe. Yeah. Create leads in your tribe. There so you go. if you're selling nappies, who wants nappies? Yes. If, you're, if you're selling tires, who wants tires? Yeah. You know, so sometimes we think we're gonna have the, the whole market. Mm -hmm. You don't find your leads yeah. for your product. Yeah. That's Absolutely. Really important. And and please, the easy way of doing this, but not necessarily the most effective way is to quickly do a website. Yeah. And your website provider will tell you about search engine optimization, they'll tell you about the Google rankings. Yes, these things are good, particularly if you're already established. But please investigate, investigate, and really like look for your market yeah. before you start going down that road. Because it can Love cost that. you a lot of money. Awesome, man. You'll start to see when your objective here is to make the phone ring. Yeah. Right? Make the phone ring. Yeah. Once the phone starts ringing, you can then move to selecting the lead. Oh, okay. That's so, who better. am I going to work with? So, imagine I, I can actually generate a number of phone calls that will come through to my phone. Yeah. I would imagine that at least 50% of them are a waste of time. Right. They're trying to filtering. sell me something yep. rather than me trying to sell oh, them okay. something. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. you've got to be able to filter out what's what's valid and what's invalid. Yeah, so yeah. you then select a number of leads from the big generation of yeah. leads that you've had that you're going to filter work that. with. And right. even of all those leads that you select, you're not going to work with all of them. Right. So you start to select out which ones am I going to start making yeah. connections with. Yeah. So now when you've done that, we're looking to see who can I pay a visit to. So imagine we started with 100 leads that we've generated. 50% yeah. of those were a waste of time. So now we're starting to select the leads. And from those leads, we might say, 30 of them yeah. are worth pursuing. Awesome. So I make 30 phone calls or I try and connect with 30. Yeah. But out of that 30, only 10 are probably going to respond right. and give me a meeting. Yeah. Right. That means we're going down the filter and now yeah. once I have a meeting, I need to qualify yeah. who and what we're going to do in this position. So qualification, you can do it in a number of ways. For me personally, I love the Bosworth method. Oh, okay, what's it's that? It's called PPVVC. I remember it, I say, I, my mind <laughs> was like, come on, I know it, Denzel, I know it, yeah. So here it is, I mean, first of all, is there an organizational pain? Yeah. 
Okay. If there's a pain, then it's worth pursuing. They need a solution. Yeah, and is that pain something that you can potentially fix? Yeah. So we're gonna check that out. Oh, so okay. is there a pain? If there's pain. no pain, there's no gain. Yeah. Next one, power. You need to make sure you're speaking to what was known as the power sponsor. sponsor. That's the word that you yeah. gave to us. Or the decision maker, the yeah. business decision maker, the person who's actually got the ability to show you the, the money. money. You uh, may I, remember. That's the kind of people I like. Yeah, there you go. From, the from Jerry Maguire. Yeah, remember yeah, Jerry yeah, Maguire? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Show me the money. the money. Keep that little movie running in the back of your mind. Like when you're that. speaking in a business meeting, yeah. trying to consider you know, if there's something we can sell, Am I talking to the power sponsor? Awesome. Many people will appear like they're the power sponsor, but they're really not yeah. the power sponsor. Okay. You need to get to the person power who is the power sponsor. Awesome. Yeah, it's a P, P, yeah. Yep, V, you need to have a vision of the solution. So what is it that your company can offer yeah. this client that's gonna help them in overcoming the pain that they're experiencing? I'm not so, what you've done as well, because if you don't get a P right, you can't offer the, can't offer the vision. No so pain. No pain. No vision. No vision. Right. No so you've that. got to be able to give them a vision of what it is that you can do in your uh, capacity as the salesperson yeah. and your capacity as a business to help them get over that problem that they're experiencing. Love it. Not only that, it's no good to just have a vision. Yeah. There's got to be value right. in that vision. So other V is value. is value. So what do I mean by value? Well, is it going to help them make money? Yeah. Is it going to help them to save costs yeah. maybe in the long term? Is it going to help them to go up the league table? So if there was a league table of organizations that were similar, good. would they look good? Right. And does it enable them and their employees and their, their customers yeah. to feel good? So that's why I say make money, save money, look good, good feel good. Sure. So they've got to, you've got to add value that does that. If yeah. they can see even two or three yeah. of those aspects being um, a, a, achieved through what you bring, yeah. you're going to go I'm a saying, long I, way I'm down. I'm giving you a quick example. We had a, a conference call with a client. I won't give out too much yep. details. Okay, you never know who's watching. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, and the client said to me, I said, if I can give you two to one return on your there investment, you are you happy? So for every pound you, you spend yep. with my company, I will give you two pound back in, in, in efficiencies. He says, yes. He says, who else is doing this? I said, client A, B, C. Right, He's like, right. oh, client A, B, and C are doing yep. it. Who are you talking to? Because yep. we want to be doing that. Yep. So as you said, we got the, the vision of, I could give you this, okay, as a product, but then the value is boom, boom, boom. He that's was, right. He was already right. in. I didn't talk about the money yet. Yeah, he's yeah. In. He's in on that's that. It. So that's awesome. You're Love starting that. to bring them in and they're starting to understand who yeah. you are and what you're capable of. Let's do this. You mentioned something about um, uh, C, the money, yeah. and um, the C part of the equation, PPVVC, yeah. is control. Yeah. You must have a method by which you can control the visual, the visualization of where the sale is in your sales pipeline. Yeah, yeah. Now this might freak a few people out, but trust me, we've all got a sales pipeline. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's just that some is obvious and visible, but there is a sales pipeline that you should be able to put this deal into that you can track where you are, whether you're at the beginning of the sale, or the middle of the sale, oh, or yes. the end of the sale. And the test is, if your boss or if someone were to stop you and say, where are you with that yeah. particular sale? You should be able to tell them. And I'm, we have like sales teams, obviously we got big sales force. Uh, and they're all over the country, and every Monday we're talking. That's and right. I'm like, what stage is the deal? That's right. And we, we have like a four step process. Yep. So I won't get into it now because we don't have time, but um, we'll talk about that more. Yeah. But yeah, it's a good point. So, so this can be quite rudimental, yeah. rudimental, or it can be quite sophisticated. Yeah. Um, uh, some great ones are on the uh, internet. You can get free versions. Oh, so, for instance, you know, things like HubSpot, you yeah, can get yeah. salesforce.com. But there's, the main thing is you've got some great tools yeah. which are available to help you monitor yourself. Love and once that. you get to this point here where you've qualified, yeah. you've found out there is a pain. I am talking to the power sponsor. We have got a vision, vision. that meets their solution. See there the is going to be some value in there and I can control it. Yeah. You know you can go to the next level. Come on now. Now we're moving out of leads. Yeah. It's no longer where we at now? Where it's we at now? now an opportunity. Right, okay. It's now an opportunity. So yeah. wow, I've got an opportunity to close some business yeah. here. So the start is let's develop a strategy to say how we're going to win this wallet. Right. Okay. Yeah, your client is now seeing you. Yeah, yeah. You're having a conversation, but you're nowhere near 
get in yeah, the deal yeah, in your yeah. back pocket right now. Strategy. So now you've got to create a strategy. Who do you need to bring in? Yeah. Who needs to be on your team? How are you going to win well, this like thing? Yeah? Yeah. What are the, how are you going to bring the solutions to the, to the table? So you need to think about a strategy from start to finish yeah. that shows how you're going to win the wallet. Yeah. So that's what's happening here. Then when you're confident that you've got the right strategy, yeah. you need to embody this inside a proposal. Yeah. So if you're not used to proposal writing, you can see there's lots of examples of how to write a decent proposal online. online. Yeah. But you know, for me personally, I still am quite old fashioned and I structure every proposal from scratch. We, we like can, to do that, yeah, it's personal. Yeah, absolutely, it absolutely. Personal. And, and I write the name of my client in there and I show them what the, um, what the background conversation was that awesome. we had. I show them what the solution is gonna be, how it's gonna impact their business, how much it's gonna cost, yeah. and what my terms are. Those are the general things. And then you've got appendices like my, um, my bio or who I've worked yeah, with yeah. before. Cool. So that's all in the present value, yeah. put the proposal together. However, when you send your proposal in, yeah. your customer might say, well, who have you done this for before? That's what we mentioned earlier. Yeah. And, and this is where they're asking you to prove your value. Yeah. Show me a case study. Exactly. Ask, so give me a case study. And now, this is where if you've been into your CRM, your yeah. Customer Relationship Management System, yeah. you should be holding information a previous one. Of previous times where you've yeah. got to this point or you've got past this point yeah. and been successful. Yeah. Every time you finish a great job, you should get a testimonial. Yeah, yeah. If you have a customer that really likes to work with you, it's not just a testimonial or a reference, which is relatively short. You ask for a case, case study. study. Yeah. Case study is generally a larger uh, insight into what yeah. happened in the company. And most importantly, it tells you where the return on investment happened. Um, yeah. So like you that. said you could guarantee two for one? I see, yeah. For every two, yeah, for every one pound yeah. he spends, you'll get two back. Well, yeah. If you were able to go back into that company, even a few months or a year later, and they were able to show you yeah. physically in the accounts how much they're now making, brilliant, what a one great thing case do study. As well, Oh, sometimes you don't have that. Like, so if you're, gonna, if you're an entrepreneur and you don't have a background of clients, mm -hmm. okay, be confident in your product and say, I'll do a project. Yes. So sometimes our clients will say, that's good for the client that you had down south or yep. north, but we want to see it. So sometimes what we have to do is do a proof of concept. So you're proving value. Mm -hmm. You can do a proof of concept and say, well, I'll demonstrate for you in six weeks, yep. four weeks, yep. whatever it may be, how this would work in your company or how this product will work in your situation. I love where you've so, gone there and I would just say one little government health warning yeah, when you yeah. do a proof of concept yeah. if you do a proof of concept make sure that when you negotiate if they like what you did in the yeah. proof of concept that the cost of that proof of yeah, concept yeah is paid for in the final line. deal. Yeah, yeah, right? like that. So don't, don't Look, lose that out there. Yeah, don't, don't lose that out free. Nothing okay, for free. Not free in this, not in this game. Love that. And okay. once you get past the proof of concept yeah. or proving value, yeah. now you're into negotiations, which yeah. is a new heading. You're now looking at how you the make agreements. agreements. Yeah. And the agreements is you're gonna lock everything down in a contract. Yeah. So the first thing we're gonna do is, once we've got our deal, we're going to start to negotiate terms. Yeah. How many do you want? Uh, what are the total numbers? And if we gave you 100, we could give you a discount. Yeah, if we yeah. gave you 1,000, we'd give you a bigger discount. Yeah. So you're trying to lock things into place here. Where, I just how, want to say something just on that. I mean, it's a real good point. Um, when you're negotiating terms, naturally you think people want to get a discount naturally and this is what happens when we're in sales we naturally think well, people just want to feel that they're getting crazy value sometimes if you push and say actually what i'm going to demonstrate to you is a return on that investment you don't have to give a discount That's right. the reason i say that naturally sales people we want to give something for free and what you're doing you're giving up your margin so negotiate more slicker than just going oh, i'll give you 20 30 40 percent okay because that affects you've got to sell more there's a little caveat there for you so government health warning number two yeah. watch out because Good clients who know their business, they also know a lot about your business yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they will know when your year end is, yeah, yeah. they will know where your half year end is, they will know where your close, quarter end is. Yeah. And they'll try and get you to close before the end of yeah, your quarter yeah, yeah. or your half year, which puts 
a little bit of the negotiation power into their camp. So yeah. please, if yeah, you're gonna if you're gonna come into negotiation, do not go in with the intention of giving yeah. huge discounts and giving your margin away. It's it's a game that everyone plays when you're into the negotiations. Be strong, yeah. realize where the value in your product and services is. Don't give away your margin. Come on. Awesome. Then you're going to find that you move through to the next stage, which is where you close. Yeah. And you will either win or you will lose. Both are valuable experiences. If you win, you're clearly going to go forward and put the details into your CRM and you're going to go to the next stage where you deploy. If you lose, again, you put things, the details of why you lost into your CRM. Yeah. This is part of your knowledge system. This is part of your Bro. intelligence, which helps you to be in your business yeah. meetings and say, well, why didn't we win that deal? What were the factors that maybe didn't make us win? Yeah. So you pay attention to that. And the thing is, you're not gonna win a lot, okay? But we work on ratios. You yeah. may win, as you yeah. filter everything down from yeah. 100, okay, you may win 10. There you go. Okay, so you've got all those losses, yep. this valuable learning. One of the things we were talking earlier, and I called uh, my head of product, because mm -hmm. you said something about recording the losses, and I was like, yes. you're not recording the losses. So on this project, we have to record the losses yeah. so how we can get better yeah. to improve our ratio, our win ratio, compared yeah. to what it is now. And this so is no that. different. You know, if you, if, if you go for a job, yeah. and you don't get the job, do you stay at home and mope that you didn't yeah. get the job? Most people do, but or, no, that's a side <laughs> yeah. Or yeah. do you give the company a ring and say, hey, I went for a job, I'm, okay, I'm sad that I didn't get it, but yeah. would you kind of give me some feedback as to why I didn't 100%. get it? 100%, why did I not get it? And then when you learn from that feedback, yeah. you just make yourself a lot more marketable for the next And I think that's the best salespeople. Yeah. You know, the amount of times I've said to people, like salespeople who come into our company, I'll say to them, fail and fail quickly. Yes. Okay? Yes. In the first three months, I want you to fail. I want you yeah. to present, there get you it go. wrong. I want you to, you know, do whatever it is, get it wrong, make a call, yeah. blunder, yeah. stumble over yeah. your words. Because that's the only way you're going to get better, yeah. okay? And is through your losses. And the more you learn from your losses, you actually start to win. And then you become a master sales. I have a wonderful uh, business partner. His name's Brad. Yeah. And uh, he says, if you're not failing on quite a few opportunities, yeah, yeah. you're not trying hard enough. You ain't trying hard Just enough. not trying hard enough. <laughs> so you've got to, got to I'm accept feeling like it. I'm feeling like a chat right now then. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about my failures. <laughs> yeah. they're, they're good back yeah, and yeah, yeah. scars awesome. to have. Love that. Once you find that you are winning, though yeah. you need to now not go thank you I won yeah. that deal now I'm gonna move on to my next one yeah. no 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 if you won you won it for a reason yeah and you will find that there is more value in keeping your client rather than trying to find a new client yeah so now the next part of the uh, the pipeline is to drive consumption, consumption. love this Okay, so this is the you, final part. Yeah, so you won the business, you, you like the final it. stage now. So yeah. now you want to make sure that you deploy well. Yeah. So if I'm doing a training course or a conference, yeah. I've got to deploy that conference. I've got to make it work. I've got to make that training course really yeah. work. So it's everything the client asked for yeah. and more. more. Come on. Now, if, if it's a service or if it's a product, yeah. we deploy. We make sure that if the product has got maybe 10 components, yeah. that they're using all, all 10. 10. Uh, so we've got, that, we've got that struggle in our business at the moment is driving usage. So right, so we've got to drive usage. So this is another opportunity to just increase yeah. the sale. Yeah. So if there's 10 components and they're using five, yeah. how can we get them to use the other five? Ten. Five, because yeah. there's opportunities yeah. there. Come on. It's just like many people use Microsoft Word mm. and they use maybe 10 features from Microsoft yeah. Word when there's a hundred available. Yeah. What if they were able to find out, oh, I can do mail merge or yeah. maybe I can do some integration of, yeah, they get more value yeah, yeah. from the product. So drive yeah, usage. Say, and it's just, and, and, and trying to bring into the real life context where we are in our business. We know, we say to our clients and I say to my sales force, if you get your clients to use 80% to 90% there you go. of that natural what happen, you'll get an upsell. There you go. Naturally, just like clients were like, yo, I'm using this so well, I like it so much. But if you've got a client who's using 30%, yeah. there's no upsell. Yeah. Not, you can't knock on their door again. Yeah. They're like, well, Denzel, you sold me the 10 and I'm only using <laughs> three of the 10. There's yeah. nothing there. But if I'm using nine, yes. then you've got an upsell opportunity. Yeah. So that is important. And that's where we go next. Because yeah. once you start to drive usage, you're yeah. looking to go for repeat business. Yeah. You're looking to upsell. You're yeah. looking to cross sell. Ooh, so this not, is my yeah, words. Yeah, right. I'm getting excited. Bro. I'm getting, <laughs> I feel like I need to get back out there, get on the phone and start selling, mate. So yeah. in our business, we have, we have leadership training. Yeah. We have... 
we have personal development, we have team development, we have uh, sales training, we have uh, uh, presentation and delivery yeah, skills. Yeah. So if somebody's on a leadership program, yeah. We could go deeper by giving them personal development. Right, okay. If they're doing personal development, we might then say, well, we can do some team development. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if they're doing that, they might be in sales, they might want to better sell better. Yeah. Or they might want to stand on their feet oh, and be more cool. confident when they're communicating yeah. with people. So we cross-refer, we so cross-sell. Absolutely. Love that. And here's the best yeah. thing. If an individual leaves from this company, yeah having had a good experience yeah. and they go elsewhere. No, we've seen that all the time. I was at a meeting yesterday. They're bringing you with yeah. them. We sat at a meeting in Walsall and a client from Staffordshire there you go. was in a client in Walsall. There you go. I said, she's like, uh, we used it, boom. And she was like, she was, she was our internal driver. And so there is nothing, the yeah. checks. there is nothing better than having what we call a sponsor like that. Yeah, yeah. Because they champion your business inside yeah. their business. business. And wow. therefore, your your overall marketing cost can come down a little yeah, bit because yeah. somebody's out there doing it for you. You'll find that word of mouth, reputation, man. is far more powerful yeah. than any marketing spend on a website or something come on, like man. that. Some powerful Absolutely. nuggets today, Earl. Oh, come on, love so that. So this yeah. growing and extending gets you back into the cycle again. Yeah. Because now that you've sold one or two items. Yeah. If you've got a good reputation, you keep a good connection with yeah. that company, that you can now start to get them to consider other things that you well. do. I tell you, it's funny, uh, give me an example. We talked about this earlier. In our company, um, we would sell like two or three. And then since we turned around the company, we've now got those clients who do two or three to buy a package of 20. There you go. Now those clients who want a package of 20, we're now trying to take them to a package of 50. There you go. And because they know us and they trust us, we're able to grow and extend. That's right. So we're now have to look for new markets. Mm -hmm. There's a market sitting right there. Absolutely. That we can go to the next level. So powerful. Stuff. And it's all about the relationship, the relationship, yeah, yeah, yeah. the relationship. Man. I can't argue that strongly enough. But so but it all starts from here. It starts from here, asking great questions. Yeah. Not going into the conversation front wheel first. Yeah. And fundamental to any great salesperson is having these four key principles awesome. firmly in your mind. Yeah. I need to know everything about the company. company. I need to position that with everything I know about what I sell personally yeah. and what we have as products and services. Yeah. I need to be great at my people skills. Yeah. And I also need to be able to close. Now, let me just qualify this by saying, not every individual has all four. Yeah. But this is where you now need to look at the landscape of who you work with. So you might be the person who's great at finding out about yeah, yeah. situational knowledge, but if I know I can draw on you for yeah. capability knowledge, we now become an awesome team. That's so it's an not isn't it? yes. So it's not just about me yeah, trying yeah. to be good at all things. Yeah. Because this is a rarity for somebody to be good at all four. I must admit I'm good at all four. <laughs> I don't want to say anything. I'm, just, I'm trying to be modest up in here. Just trying to be modest. But I'm serious though. But no, but you're right. And I'll tell you why, in our, in our company, okay, this, this one here, yes. okay, um, yes. is our product manager. Yes. So our product manager, we have a product manager yes. who teaches us how to sell the products. Here, capabilities, our marketing manager. So these two join together to make yeah. us really strong. And then my sales team tends there to have go. these two things there here. So those are like three departments coming together to make one sale. There you go. So you're 100% right in what you're saying. It's powerful. Gotcha. We should take over organizations. <laughs> if we went into organizations, we can change your company from here to here because we've done it. So maybe that's maybe that's what we need to start doing a little okay. bit more. But let, I've got to just say as well, this is still quite a high level view. Yeah, yeah. There is a lot of more, a lot more granularity underneath all of this. Yeah. But this will generally get you in the ballpark. Yeah, hundred percent. Now, on a serious note, as we close down, this has been excellent content. Um, oh, if if you're coming across this, so you may be someone watching this, and you're head of HR, you're head of sales, okay, uh, or anything that capacity, or you, you're in the marketing department, you you know your sales force are not selling the product well enough, and things like that. How can they find out your details? And what we'll also do if you come through the website, come through our details, we'll get you a discount, we'll work out a discount with Earl. But how can they find your details? Okay. Our um, first port of call yeah. is come to our website www. 
thekairosexperience.com. That's the Kairos, K-A-I-R-O-S, experience.com. Uh, we're a local company here in the West Midlands, but we've got a global footprint. We travel worldwide. We've been to at least 46 different countries where we help them to, you know, make money, save money, look good, feel good. Love you know, so that. Love to love work that. with you. Okay. So listen, I think we're going to have to bring you even more content, but I say this once again, I said it right at the beginning of the video, if you truly want to take your career to the next level, if you want to take your company to the next level, if you're an entrepreneur, a director, you've got to learn these key things that Earl talked about today, learning how to sell. There's two different models, you've got the solution-based selling model, mm. and one that we're really working on in our company now is the challenge, the challenge Challenger model. Sale. Mm. I think that's just, you know, it's awesome. We can talk a little bit more about that another time. But listen, obviously our key thing at Gem Power is that we want to inspire, motivate, and empower and I truly believe if you implement some of the things that you heard today, you will be empowered, you'll be motivated because you'll be making more money and you'll be inspired because you'll be driving around in that car from the check that you got from the sales. Okay, so listen, we will see you soon, okay, for another, you know, series with my main man, Earl from the Kairos Experience. We're calling this a Monday with Earl. Okay, that's what we're calling it. Uh, so well, this video will be dropping and other videos, so make sure you subscribe, but also let us know, did these techniques work? Try them in your workplace. Leave comments yeah. below and let us know if it worked and obviously share this with your friends too. See you soon. Thank you.